in messaging to your to potential clients and customers. Um, I'll give one good example. We have uh, Mark Smith, who is um, a sort of locally famous here in the, the Richmond, Virginia area. Uh, and he's actually, I'm not sure if he's managed to, if he's signed on today. He was supposed to attend. Anyway, he has uh, one of his, his company is an actually an automobile repair shop. Um, and I don't want to say the name of it without his permission, but he's sort of locally famous for his radio advertising and the message that he gets across. Every ad is really not about his business. It's about um, backpacks for kids and all kinds of uh, philanthropic um, efforts that he does with his company. And what his company does is actually secondary in his advertising. Um, but that's the thing that sticks out. Uh, his company values are sort of indistinguishable from his, I think his, his personal values. And so his messaging does a great job of representing that because that's really what he's known for. It's, it's first and foremost in, every, in all of his advertising. And uh, again, there's a, um, I think there's a, there's a tremendous amount of value in that. We'll, get, we'll circle back to the, to the value that that represents in uh, a later slide. But that's definitely one of the things that you want to do. Um, one of the things as, as a company, Value Digital, what we do, we try to uh, promote the fact that we're you know, fully transparent. And, and that's part of our core values as a company. So um, when you want to put your messaging together, think about what it is your company stands for. Really kind of fine tune that for yourself. And then you can present it uh, to, to your audience. Uh, next thing is obviously messaging represents your products and services. Now this seems kind of simplistic. I know that uh, it should represent. It should basically sell. Tell you tell their audience what you sell. Um, but it is surprising how many websites I've been to and how many clients I've talked with, uh, and and that do a not such a great job of telling you what it is that they do. I, you shouldn't have to figure out from someone's website or from their advertising what it is that they're promoting. It's, this isn't a game of hide and seek. It isn't uh, you know solve the mystery. Really should have you know, a, a, a clear message about what it is you, uh, what services and products you have for folks. Um, and you know again, it may seem simplistic, overly simplistic to mention that, but it's always a good idea to, to be very clear on, on what it is that you're, you're trying to uh, promote. Um, and the clearer that is, the better, better job you're going to do with it. Um, and the third thing is what res resonates with your audience. Again, this is something we'll circle back to as well, because there are a number of different ways to make messages that resonate with your audience. Um, I think if you, if you focus on those first two very well, uh, clearly, clearly presenting what your company stands for and what you do, you have a really good chance. You're, you've got a, a great foundation for, for messaging that resonates. Um, you know, people react to different types of messaging in different ways. And when I say resonates, it means that, that it, it's something that's, that, that, that sort of grabs them, that, that uh, doesn't, it's not easy to skip. It's not easy for them to, to, to gloss over. It's something that sticks with them for some reason. So you want to reach out and try to find a way to connect. Um, and so that's, th these are the three biggest things you can do to, for good messaging. All right. So let's talk about the actual message creation a little bit. Um, the first part is clarifying your value. So what is it you offer? Again, think about the, not just the products and services here, but every single product and service that is sold also solves some problem. Um, and so you have to think about when you, what is it that you offer, not just the physical good or the actual service, but what is it that that is going to do for somebody? Um, if, uh, if you are a plumber, one of the things that you offer obviously is, you know, you can put in a sink, but you can also solve the problem of somebody's existing sink leaking all over the floor. So what are the underlying things that you offer besides just the, the, the very specific and, and um, the very specific functions uh, or, or products? Um, 
And so if, if you're having some trouble with sort of figuring out, okay, what is it, what is that additional value that I offer? Or what is it, what else is it that I can give to customers and clients that they can't get elsewhere? One of the things that I've found useful uh, in talking to, to folks who are their own, uh, own their own businesses uh, is why did you start your business? And usually that's, um, again, this is clarifying your value. What is the value that you provide to folks? A lot of uh, a lot of company owners and founders that I've talked with over the past years, they've started their businesses because they were already in that sort of industry and they saw an opportunity to do things better in some way. Um, again, I'll use us as an example, Ballyhoo Digital, that uh, the idea that we're able to be transparent with with uh, our folks. And again, I'm not trying to sell you anything, but obviously I know our business pretty well. But the idea that there are a lot of uh, marketing agencies out there, digital marketing agencies, agencies out there who um, maybe they don't quite prey on people's um, lack of knowledge about digital marketing, but they find it easy to sort of hide whether or not they're being successful behind a bunch of data and numbers and things like that. And that, that's one of the, so what we, we started uh, Value Digital partly because we saw that as an opportunity. If we're if we're the the organization that doesn't do that, you can 100% count on to give it to you straight instead of trying to uh, just cash checks and 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 hide whether or not we're being successful. Uh, that was our opportunity. And again, most people who started start their own businesses, I've found, have have some have some real altruistic or idealistic reasons for it. And that value, I think, is really important to get into your messaging uh, to to let people know, hey, you know. We are different, and this is the thing that we're focused on that's better than everyone else. Um, another thing to do is what, what kind of feedback do you get from your customers and clients? So when you have uh, good relationships with your customers and clients, they can, they're going to let you know what it is that they like about you, whether it's through reviews online, Google reviews or Facebook reviews, or just telling you, hey, I really like this about you. Um, and I don't think you can get much better than that. When you have folks who are telling you, this is, you know, you've really, you made my day because this, that, or the other. Those are the kinds of things that you should promote more. Um, those are the kinds of things that you want to get into your messaging for for other folks. Because if, if you've made one person happy uh, with a, an aspect of your service or, or a product that you offer, you're going to make other people happy with that same service or product. That's uh, almost guaranteed. Um, let's see. So here's another thing. What does your audience really want uh, when you're creating a message? What is it um, that, they, that they really want? What is really going to resonate with them? And this is a really, this is kind of a cool thing. And this is really, this is the, the kind of marketing angle of things. There are only two real things that you have to focus on uh, if you want to grab people with your with your messaging. Um, the first one is pain management. What do people want? They have some discomfort. They have some issue. They have some problem that needs to be solved that's bothering them. Um, and focusing on that pain or the pain points is a great way to really get to them and say, okay, we know that you're concerned about um, whether or not your water heater is going to make it through, um, you know, the, the month or what have you. We know that this is a, and so we offer you this maintenance plan, et cetera, things like that, um, that, that can you essentially want to lift the, the stress and relieve the stress from people. And that is a terrific way to focus your messaging is here's what we do for you. We help you remove that stress. So it doesn't even really matter, again, whether you offer a product or a service, it's going to, a, a lot of times what that product or service is going to do is going to make their life easier in some way. And when you make someone's life easier, whether you're saving them time, you're saving them money, um, you're saving them hassle, all of those are pain points. And if if what you do helps reduce those things and remove that stress from, from their life, then that's a great thing to focus on. So the other thing to focus on is 
what I call the feel good. And this, you can use both of these together, but the feel good uh, works in a lot of different ways. You want people to feel good about buying from you. And that's not, um, that, that's not that difficult to do, honestly. There are a number of different ways to do that too. Um, luxury items, for example. Let's say you sell high-end watches, Rolexes and things like that. Um, people will feel good about purchasing that, those, those sorts of things if you make them feel good about it. Words like deserve are terrific for selling large ticket items or luxury goods. You deserve um, this watch. You've worked this hard. You deserve this vacation. Um, but it extends beyond just luxury goods too. You want people to feel good about doing business with you. Uh, let me circle back to our friend Mark Smith. And I think besides him being uh, this uh, wonderful philanthropist, uh, person who's a, he's a giving person and whatnot, by using that in his messaging, by by focusing his messaging around backpacks for kids and helping you know kids not be hungry and things like that, that that conveys and that transfers to people who do business with him because they know that some part of what they're doing is supporting a um, something bigger, something something good like feeding children. So that makes them feel good about doing business with his company. Um, and again. That's not necessarily a cynical thing, but you know it, it's part of his values, and that again that can transfer to 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 your customers and clients. Um, another way to, to give them the feel good is to make them feel smart for for doing business with you. Um, you want people to feel like, hey, you've made a good choice by selecting us to provide this service for you, um, and that's again, that's not so difficult to do, but people really they really do react and they engage well when when they're made to, to feel like they're they're making the right choices they're making choices um if you can establish establish yourself as as an authority and an expert in your field um that makes people feel good too they go okay well i've chosen somebody who is really good at what they do and now i'm i'm fine with being their, their customer and client um and you've really set yourself up for a lot of success if you're able to do that um, so next we want to talk about putting it all together. Uh, all these things, how do you, how do you make this into a real message here? Um, there are a couple of simple rules. First, be direct. Always, always, always just take the fluff out. Tell people exactly and specifically what it is that you offer for them. Those goods and services should be very specific. Um, it is really not a, a simple another simple way to say that it, you you really just want to tell people straightforward don't make them parse what it is you're trying to say let them know this is what we do um be personable i think this is a great way if you're writing content or you're presenting yourself in any format uh being conversational is just one of the most powerful ways to to present your organization and to present the values that you have um, it's really, it's a matter of maybe getting outside of your industry jargon and, and, and such, and just, you know, finding a way to speak to people simply and in a friendly manner. Uh, like I said, whether that's through a video like this or through the way you write, make it simple, make it clear, make it friendly. Um, be helpful. This is a good one too make sure that the information you're providing to people is useful to them. Um, and that really, that's going to be one of the biggest things. Um, when you are designing any sort of messaging, again, think about it from, for solving a problem um, and make sure that that message that you have there does that for someone. It provides some value, some information that they were looking for. Uh, and finally, be consistent. Uh, again, this kind of circles back to a, to a branding thing um, a little bit. Uh, when you have consistent messaging, that makes you more of an authority. People want to see the same things sort of throughout your wherever your messaging is. If you're writing an ad for some um, publication or just you know for for uh, digital media, make sure that the that the wording you use is somehow 
consistent with what's on your website that, you know, even if it's exactly the same wording, that gives you that authority, that gives people a sense of surety that they're working with a business that um, has their best mind, has their best interest in mind. Uh, and that's, uh, that, again, it's, it's fairly, fairly straightforward in that. Um, and so I think that that probably, I'll give uh, one quick example. I, our time is running, we're running just a little bit over, but I do want to give a quick example of how all of this works in, in, in practice. Uh, again, I'll use Ballyhoo Digital as our uh, sort of um, uh, as our example here, when we were talking about putting this webinar together, we went through a lot of different idea, uh, ideations of, of titles for it. Um, and after, after a couple of days of this, we came up with the title, the tight 20 marketing results, marketing for results in 20 minutes. And this was very deliberate because what we wanted to do was we wanted to get across a couple of simple ideas. Uh, number one, that this is going to be short. We're going to be unlike other webinars that take an hour. Now, again, we're a little over our 20 minutes right now, but um, we wanted to be able to provide real useful information in just 20 minutes. So marketing for results in 20 minutes. We want the people who watch our webinar series to get something out of it that they can use, they can put in practice for themselves, and it will actually give them results uh, in their own marketing and their own efforts. So again, just thinking about things like that. Those were very deliberate choices that we made um, to try to get as much information as we could into as few words as possible. It was very, and again, we call it, it's direct, it's interesting, hopefully, uh, and it got your attention. Um, so um, the name of this episode was called, Are You a Tree Falling in the Forest? Again, we went through multiple different iterations of that message, specifically to try to find something that would grab the attention of our of our audience and give some idea of what it is that um, we want to talk about and what we want to help with them. Because everyone knows the cliche, if your tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it, did it make a sound? And I think anybody who's been in business for a while and tried their hand at marketing, they know what that feels like. So um, again, these are just some of our deliberate ways that we try to do this. And we recommend that you guys uh, be very deliberate and thoughtful in the way you put your messaging together as well. And so I think we'll uh, go on to um, to take any questions that we have. Um, all right. Um, here's one we have. Uh, for a young startup looking to get their name out, what's the best way to message? Digital content, articles, website, or focusing on brand? That is a, a phenomenal question. Let me go back here. Uh, sorry, guys. Let me. All right. Um, Actually, let me, if you give me just a second, guys, here, we want to put this up, uh, our screen share back here with our contact information. Okay, um, so the best way to message, best way to get the message out, um, well, of course, we're a digital marketing agency, so we love uh, the digital realm, but we're also very much a um, consultative agency, so I think that really the answer is going to be different depending on which business, what your business is about and the kind of things that you need uh, out of your business. Um, we, I would say for most startups, branding uh, is probably not the way to go. That's an easier answer. Branding is generally um, for the bigger boys and it's a more expensive proposition. Um, articles are nice. Uh, and I think that they work especially well if you are in a very niche market and there are lots of industry publications or at least a handful of influential industry publications that um, are out there that will reach your audience very directly. Um, we generally find a lot of value in uh, uh, Google ads, for example, because the targeting is really good. You can get really detailed in uh, in the types of keywords that, that, that you're focusing on. Um, and that can provide other benefits too. Uh, it teaches you how people search for the types of goods and services that you offer. And that's something that actually you can, you can once you find what search terms they're using, you can use that in your own messaging in other ways. So that's, uh, that's, that has a lot of value. Um, but really, it's, uh, there, 
the answer, as in many things with digital marketing, is it depends. It depends on the specific circumstances, the specific industry that you're in, the type of uh, uh, competition and the amount of competition that you have, the goods and services that you're trying to sell. So um, let's see. Do we have any other questions? Um, don't have anything else at the moment, guys. So I hope you found this helpful. Um, we will be running this series uh, bi-weekly, I guess, every other week. So uh, in about two weeks, we're going to run another one. And I think what we'll probably focus on for the next episode will be um, UX and user experience, that is, and um, on your website and ways that you can help tighten up your website so that you get uh, you can encourage people to perform an action and reach out to you. Um, so until then, I really appreciate uh, everyone coming out and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much.